Awesome. Awesome coffee. All right. Hello, everybody. So this is Clarion, and today, what are we going to be doing? Well, we are going to be looking at currying. What is currying? Um, not curry. Uh, <laughs> okay. Bad joke. But uh, we're going to be essentially using some basic JS. We're going to be directly manipulating the DOM. So we'll set up an index HTML file and an index JS file. It's linked up. And we're going to basically create, with currying, what we're going to do is we're going to just create a simple... Uh, uh, a simple converter here that will take a number in Kelvin and then give us the Fahrenheit. All right, uh, so we have a converter, we have a little button, input field over here, and then we display our results in a P tag. Okay, pretty simple. And then we're gonna look at it, we're gonna compare and contrast a regular function versus a curate, uh, courier, and then seeing, um, just comparing and contrast the two. It's not really the best example to show you how powerful it is, but we can in this, in by doing this, we're going to, you know, review direct DOM manipulation, query selectors, uh, looking at the formula for converting, how we would convert that with our functions, and then as we're doing that, compare and contrast um, currying versus regular, uh, our, our uh, a regular function setup, okay? So what I have here set up is an index.html file, which uh, I've very basic skeleton here, so you can go ahead and set this up uh, with your, you know, doc type HTML header, just put a title, body, and then I've linked up a script to index.js, in the text editor here we can see the index.js, which is just empty for now. I have a few comments in it, we'll go over that. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video and set this up if you haven't done that already, uh, or if, you're just co if you just want to watch the video, that's fine too. And, uh, and then we'll get started. All right, cool. So once this is set up, we can refresh our browser. And oops, this can't be right because let me save this again. Can refresh. Okay, so we should just have an empty page, right? This is our index HTML. We can see that it's coming in, coming from the users, going in through the desktop, currying index. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to, in our body here, under our div with the ID DOM, Start off making a button. We're going to give it an idea of convert to Kelvin. Uh, we'll give it the tag of convert. And underneath here, we'll create an input. And our input is going to have a type of number. We're going to take an ID of the Kelvin number, right? Because that's the number of Kelvin that we're going to be inputting uh, type. And we're going to give it a value initialize the value of zero. And then after our input, we're gonna have a P tag, which will have a span. And the span is gonna take an ID of results. Okay. And we will, in our P here, P tag over here, we'll just say this is our Fahrenheit that we will be getting. So, Fahrenheit. Is that how you spell it? I don't know. How you... Okay, wait. Farin and then height. I think it's like this. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, you can you can uh, let me know if I spelled that right later on. So p Fahrenheit id da da da. So I'm saving all of this, and let's go ahead and refresh and see what we got. In our browser. Cool. So now we we can see that we're back to the example that I showed you in the beginning. The only difference is when I hit convert, we don't get any results because we haven't yet created any JavaScript to do anything, make these events work, listen to each other, etc. So why don't we go ahead now and build a regular function that will convert uh, this Kelvin number to Fahrenheit. And you know what we should do actually is why don't we just say convert button uh, instead of convert, why don't we just write convert Kelvin. Uh, yeah, we didn't do that. That. Okay, just so it makes a bit, bit more sense. And okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do some set up our DOM so we can manipulate the DOM with some basic JavaScript. So in our index for now, uh, what do I have over here? I have the formula for Kelvin. And the formula for Kelvin uh, to Fahrenheit, sorry, the formula to convert Kelvin into Fahrenheit, pretty simple. We have our, we have our formula which was Kelvin, we subtract the 273.15, uh, 
All right, that number then is multiplied by nine, divided by five, and we have 32. And that's how we get our conversion. Okay, very cool. So, and then let's just talk quickly. Should we talk about currying right now? No, if, you, if you're just interested in the currying part, you can just skip ahead uh, to about halfway where we should be starting with currying. But if you wanna continue with just uh, learning about the, or just going through this process of signing up the doc, query selectors and all of that, then let's just keep going with that for now, I think. So I'm just gonna make some space here. And we're gonna set up some variables here. So we have a constant. What do we have? We have a convert Kelvin ID and a Kelvin number and results. Okay, so the button is convert Kelvin. So if we do constant convert Kelvin, we just say document, doc query selector. Okay, and then we're gonna grab our uh, the hash of convert Kelvin. Okay, so now we're setting our button to convert Kelvin. All right, and then why don't we also do constant results. If I can spell it correctly, there's document, dot query selector, and that's gonna take the hash of results. Okay, very cool. And now underneath here, what we can just do is we'll do convert Kelvin uh, dot on click. So there's an on-click event now that we're setting it so that when we click on the button, something's going to happen. And what do we want to happen here is we'll create just a function uh, that's going to console log a test to see that it's working. And uh, the string of test. All right. So why don't we just save this, refresh the browser, and hit the convert button. Okay. So if we look down now in our console, because we have the uh, I have the I have the dev console for uh, for Google Chrome over here, if you go down and view and developer, see I'm in the JavaScript console right now. And when I click on the convert Kelvin, now we see the test, it shows us the number, shows us the string of test. So we are we are successfully selecting now with our query selector our button and having an on click, which is basically the convert Kelvin <clears throat> grabs the click of the convert of convert Kelvin, uh, sends out a function, right? Because we need to send out the action. Uh, to log test. All good, everything's working. So now that we know that this is working, we can go ahead underneath here and we can create our uh, can, our formula, our Kelvin to Fahrenheit, and then set this into our onclick function. So that whenever we click, instead of we just getting the test, we get the conversion and we can send that into our results over here. Right, so how do we do that? So we just wanna do constant, convert Kelvin uh, and it's like a regular fun function so for this example we'll call it reg okay and we're gonna want to take some parameters right because what do we want we want to have the number Kelvin which is the number that we input and then we could also take the formula and the formula will be so whatever number we apply in the input then the formula will uh, will execute and we can do that by setting the formula <clears throat> inside our inside our function. And this formula could essentially be this, right? It's our F. And that K is our Kelvin. Okay. So I can just copy this and paste this over here. And how do we set this up to Kelvin now? Which we go ahead and write. Set this up to Kelvin. Okay, great. So now we have our formula set up. We have our Kelvin. But we still need to now return the results, return this to our results so we can display it. So how do we do that? Well, let's just make an explicit return just because we're, we're just moving forward here. Uh, and let's just really focus on this. So we can actually grab, if you remember, we have results that's document query selectoring, the hash of results in our index HTML, the hash of results is, <clears throat> it's in our span. So this is our Fahrenheit, our P tag, we see Fahrenheit over here, and then our span has the ID of results. So we can just, in our return, we can actually just grab our results dot inner HTML, okay? And then by doing this, now we're accessing the inner HTML of our results. And we could say this can equal formula. All right. 
So now, essentially with this, this setup, what we're saying is that Kelvin is our input, so whenever not, whatever the first parameter we take into uh, is our first parameter, and the second parameter, what we've gone ahead and done, is we've set up the formula to execute, and then what, what are we returning is the results of that formula. Sorry, my toe is a little itchy. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna save this. Now I'm gonna go back into the on click. So to see this in action, <clears throat> The lower console log, we just do convert Kelv reg, and now we can just put in our Kelvin. So let's say we take 300, okay? 300 Kelvin, and let's see what that does. So we save this, hit convert Kelvin. Okay, look at that. So we get this Fahrenheit number here now of 80.33004. And as you can see, my calculator over here, see, I've already done this calculation in advance because I can't do this math in my head, fortunately. Uh, 273.5 times this minus that divided by that. Uh, don't have time for that. So I just did this in the calculator and I can see that the number is right. Hopefully you got the same number. That's great. Uh, if you did and you're following along. So it is working. Uh, we don't really need all these decimals. So what we could do about that is we could invoke the math.round method over here and wrap it around our formula if we want to get around in the decibel number, refresh. Uh, that's not going to work. But we just hit convert Kelvin, 80 degrees. Okay, very cool, right? Awesome. Uh, what happens if we go into our input and we put in 500 or something? See, we still get 80 degrees, and that is because we have not yet at all uh, set up any value we haven't we're not targeting our value of our input we're just hard coding 300 into the convert kelvin reg so it doesn't matter what we change the number of <clears throat> in our input field we're always going to receive 80 because we set it to 300 indefinitely so why don't we go ahead now that we have this set up and uh, and actually start building up our courier version uh, of this convert kelvin regular and then take away the hard code and set it to that and look, compare the two to each other, okay? So uh, occurring, what is a occurring function? Well, we're gonna say, to simplify it, we're gonna say it's a function that can take multiple param parameters, right? When we modify the function, so this is a function that takes multiple parameters, and we're gonna modify it to take <coughs> one parameter at a time. And that way, when it runs multiple times, we only run the second part. So once we create a courier function, uh, utility, like we, we're gonna do, we're gonna see how that looks. So if that makes sense, it's cool. If not, we're just gonna write it out. So I'll just write constant convert, uh, convert Kelvin curried, okay? And so what we do is we set up the first parameter, which is Kelvin, okay? And then we don't put in a second parameter, we can invoke function of formula. All right, and then, um, all right, there's a sloth that just entered the room. Okay, that's it. And then, so that, in, okay, invokes formula. And then, now that we've invoked the formula, uh, it's Kelvin, as we, we can already see that. Our, uh, our, composi our composition, our function composition is, uh, is different than our original function. But within here, essentially what we can do now, within our convert Kelvin query, we can take our formula that we have uh, for our Kelvin conversion and set it up the same way that we did in our regular uh, function. So I've just copied the formula over here now and I've added it to our Curried Kelvin version that we've created here. All right, and we're going to again return the results. We'll be, a formula is going to be returned to our p tag, which, which is selected in our inner HTML. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And to see this in action, we're going to comment out the regular conversion of Kelvin. And now I'm going to set in the convert Kelvin curried. So, what do you think is going to happen? If I just set it up like this, convert Kelvin curried, and I just put in 300 like we did last time. Oops. Let's save that and refresh and see what happens. Go ahead, I click convert Kelvin, and we don't get anything. Now why is that? 
I want you to go ahead, come back here, and think about it. Uh, and then if you come up with a solution while I'm drinking coffee, then awesome. That means that you're following along from Kelvin, going purings from the regular. So go ahead and take a look at that and see if you can if you can make this uh, curried version work. All right, awesome. If you figure that out, that's really great. Um, essentially, yeah. I mean, it's you can see that we're only having we only have one parameter here, <clears throat> so there's it's not there's no implicit uh, formula in our second parameter here, which is being set up. So we can't just go ahead and call it. What we need to do is we need to invoke our formula, right? Because it is a function. It's not a parameter. Uh, so we do that just by invoking it. And if we refresh now and we put in, uh, we don't have to put anything in, still not hooked up. We just hit convert Kelvin. We see now that we get 80 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, and the math.round is rounding the number up. So we get the same thing. So now we can see the two differences, right? We have the convert Kelvin regular, we have our two parameters, and then we have our convert Kelvin curry. So we still haven't yet actually looked at why or how this can be a powerful tool, right? I mean, essentially now we're just kind of, we're just looking at the difference of the composition. And in this particular uh, context of this example, it's not really, uh, you can't really see it in this context to be how this could be so powerful. But I can, what we can do is we can create a courier now. Now that we have this set up and we can look at the courier and we can also set up our input so that it's no longer just being hard coded. And then with the courier going into our input, we can discuss how this can be beneficial uh, in different contexts and we can just see the whole thing in action that way. So why don't we actually just set up our input first, I think, just so we have this working before we go ahead. So to do that, go back on our index HTML. We're gonna see that our input type is number, it takes Kelvin number as our ID, that's how we set up the ID. So we can just go constant Kelvin number going to be once again document. This time we're just going to grab the element by ID, which is Kelvin number, right? Okay, and now what we can do is we can access the value of the Kelvin number, okay? So Kelvin number now has access to Kelvin number, which is the ID, which is the ID of our input type, which is a number, which is uh, directly being affected in our JavaScript DOM, uh, in our DOM, okay, by our JavaScript, sorry. So in order to, uh, to get this value and to set it up into, uh, into our onclick function over here, all we, all we need to do <coughs> is we can replace the hard-coded 300 with Kelvin number. Uh, Kelvin number, and what else do we need to do? I'll let you think about it. Because if we just grab Kelvin number, now we're, now we're just saying Kelvin number, but if we do this and we save, okay, and we refresh, if I now put in 300, convert Kelvin, we get NAN, which means not a number, okay? So why are we getting that? Because Kelvin number is, we're not accessing the value of Kelvin number. Exactly. So if we do Kelvin number and we grab the value of it and we save, we refresh the page now, and we type in 300, boom, 80. Look at that. And now if I go into the input type and I bring it down to 273, 32. And our converter is working, 295, 71. We're good. So you can go ahead and test that out. And that's pretty cool, right? So we have now essentially just uh, built from scratch our converter uh, just by grabbing a couple of query selectors uh, and grabbing the ID and the value from our input type and setting it to our on click of our button and, uh, and setting then our conversion formula that we created, our curried version, to the value of the Kelvin number ID. Excellent. <clears throat> so why don't we go ahead and, and write out our courier. 
now that we have the curried version, and then just do a final uh, analysis of the two and call it a day. So what I need to do in this situation is we're just going to set our convert Kelvin curried to a constant called courier. Okay. And now courier, all we need to do is invoke courier. We save. Let's just save that and refresh. Go back to 300. My lucky number. We get 80. It looks like everything is still working. But what's changed? Let's take a look. Well, well we added a courier. Uh, we've added our courier. And the benefit of this is not, uh, you know, it's not, it's not so clear in this particular context because really what we've done here is we have a constant Kelvin reg and we could have done the exact same thing with our regular without having to call the courier. But if I were to comment out the courier and bring in the convert Kelvin reg and set this to our Kelvin number dot value, and I refresh. If we do that, zero, okay, we see minus 460, 300, back to 80. It's this, it, we're getting the same result. But we the way that we're getting it is different, right? And if I go back, courier is always going to be the one parameter of Kelvin number dot value. And we've set it up as courier. So this is our utility function. It's a curried utility function. And if um, if we were running this multiple times, the beauty in this is that we would only be running the second part of it that we are invoking. And this can be great for when it comes to uh, when it comes with our data. Uh, and for example, with like Node.js, if you're running multiple files or things of that nature. Uh, so this is actually a very, very powerful, uh, powerful technique for JavaScript, right? Um, but we're not really going into that so much for now. We're just looking at functional composition and looking at the direct manipulation of the DOM here and then seeing the two examples. So go ahead and you can play with this. And uh, if you come up with your own ideas of things that you would like to try occurring uh, and giving examples of that, that would be awesome. You can do that and, uh, and leave a comment with what your example is. It'd be great to see that. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to post the code underneath with this video and um, and thanks for checking it out.